Greetings, I am Solid Skelly, and welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, where things are no doubt going to be happy as can be. <gasps> Who is this? And now we have Loxene being, well, evil. And, uh, well, this is a significant cutscene for more than a few reasons, uh, the most prevalent of which we'll see in a little bit, but, uh, another of which being, uh, everybody basically playing the manipulation game with Sora. He is their plaything, and even if he doesn't know it, he will uh, eventually find out, kick their asses, and go through everything just fine, because that's just what Sora does. Yes, as you can imagine, they're playing with his memories of Kairi slash the blonde chick, and of course, everything is about to go foobar. Again, this is legitimately terrifying stuff, like, and especially the fact that you have some very shady people, you know, going to town manipulating Sora like this. Um, <laughs> again, if this wasn't a Disney property, things would be quite, uh, terrible. CG cutscene, whoa! Uh, yeah, like, I mean, there are a couple more bits of uh, CG dotted about here and there, but again, they're really only as long as that because, well, you know, GBA limitations. But alas, despite Sora being knocked flat on his ass by Loxene doing her little ghost trick, yes, we see that little star thing, which we were meant to believe is Kairi's good luck charm, but it seems that her little something has changed. It must be uh, one of those deja vu kind of dealies like in the Matrix. Is that where Sora is? Well, no, not this time, that won't be until Kingdom Hearts coded. Even still, though, like, I mean, <laughs> this is kind of a testament as to why I really do like uh, Loxene's character, because as much as I can get away with in a Disney game, she really does know how to twist the knife, and that, uh, well, it both leads to some comical, yet absolutely fucking scathing remarks. But yes, the blonde chick finally has a name. Namine. Someone who I feel the need to thank. And, uh, well, let's just say, Sora isn't exactly going to take this lying down. Uh, in spite of what you're seeing on screen right now. Yeah, that being, that being said, though, like, I mean, I do think if, if this wasn't being overseen by our lords and masters over at the Disney Corporation, Lark scene would probably be, well, let's just say a lot more incisive and, uh, probably allowed to indulge her sadism uh, that was implied in the manga. Uh, and, like, I mean, I guess even in general, really, for what you see of her in the games. But I suppose that kind of remains to be seen, depending on what future games do with her as, like, the El Reyna personality. I don't know. Anyway, Loxene in terms of a boss fight. Uh, one that I think is a little bit easier in, like, the GBA version. And, uh, it's mainly just down to the fact that I think you have a... The, the range of her attacks are a little bit more sparse. And despite the fact that she has moves like that, you can reasonably get out of the way of most of them. Uh, whereas in Reach of Memories, because of the fact that it's 3D, and I did, I think, include some of her moveset from uh, the data battles from Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Yeah, she's a lot more deadly, so uh, keep on your guard. I mean, that being said, considering how bosses are kind of scaling in difficulty even as of now, yeah, you gotta be on your guard, but... While I would say watch your back, at this point, Loxene, you should be okay with. At least at this point. I mean, otherwise, I'd just recommend that you go back and level grind for a little bit. But other than that, it's, uh, good to go. And again, if I didn't mention it before, I'll mention it again. Yeah, members of the, de of the development team voicing, uh, the characters here, besides Axel and whatever stock clips I got of the previous characters. It's, uh, kind of weird, and I'm kind of surprised I don't do that- well, I mean, uh, for a game like Kingdom Hearts, obviously they would, you know, hire celebrities because, uh, you know, Disney and whoever they can afford, really. Well, I mean, I, I guess, technically, that was a little bit more true of past games, uh, mainly because of the fact that I think maybe they had a larger talent pool to grow from. I think only I think the only sort of stars now that you see in the games are, like, people who are in the films themselves. Which, I mean, it's true of the original Kingdom Hearts in and of itself, but, I mean, like, in Kingdom Hearts 1, you had, like, David Boreanaz as Squall, uh, bloody Billy Zane as Ansem, Secret of Darkness. Uh, it's weird. And there's stun impacts not really working because we're using a lightning-based attack on a person who uses lightning. See the fallacy. And again, uh, I'm, you, you always wait with beta. Well, kind of surprised Goofy didn't do anything there. Hmm. 
Uh, I guess maybe he's a little bit more accurate in reach enemy memories, I suppose. Maybe that's just my, my memory playing tricks on me, which is fitting enough because we're in Castle Oblivion. Anyway. As I said before, you do always wait with beta breath whenever you use Donald because, you know, there's always an off chance that he will use lightning and, uh, well, he's foolish. But then again, he also has a certain magical ability in Kingdom Hearts 3 known as Zeta Flare, so I completely forgive him for any transgressions he may in fact give. And of course we have more scenes of Loxene twisting the knife yet again, and uh, Sora getting angry, which is a bit of an alien emotion, because you don't really see that that often from Sora. And I think in this game, as I did mention in many parts ago, it is handled quite brilliantly here, because you get to see a side of Sora where he does kind of... He goes all out, and uh... I don't know, there's something about it that I kind of like, in the sense that it is pushing Sora to his limits, and because of the fact that he is still so very young, and somebody who doesn't quite have a lot of experience under his belt as a Keyblade Master, it is... It is fascinating to see him act the way that he does, and especially as you will soon see how he acts around his friends, especially with the revelation of, you know, Nomine being under the organization's lock and key, it will... Things get interesting, I'll say that much. Again, at the risk of repeating myself, it does kind of ring true that, you know, if somebody is so ingrained in your memories and you truly believe that they were there from the get-go and someone you want to protect. That is... God, that... It, it's spine-chilling, man. And that's, now we have more evil plot goings-ons and flirtatious things abound. And Axel having practically none of Loxine's shit because, well, she's overconfident. And that overconfidence will be her downfall. But again, we don't need enough about that, we need to meet some more people. Mysterious Shadow Man. Who could this be? Yes, it is indeed. Vexen. A character that I utterly fucking despise. Uh, not because of the character himself, mind you, mainly down to his boss fight. But we'll be getting to that uh, some point in the future. But yes, things are about to get even freakier. Yes, the revelation of Nomine's name, Loxene twisting the knife, and of course, Vexen himself showing up. What could possibly go wrong beyond even this? Well, you'll just have to wait until next part, but uh, you might get a glimpse of who this might be in just a little second. Uh, again, I think this kind of gives it away a little bit more uh, than you would in Reach Hand of Memories because of the fact that, you know, Reach Hand of Memories can work with, like, camera angles and stuff, and here you can kind of peg it out depending on if you get a good enough look at it before the screen fades out, so... Yeah, this plot twist might, uh, f kind of sabotage a few people. But for the sake of being a dumbass, I guess I'll play the mystery. That being said, though, like, I mean, in terms of characterization, I really do like Vexen. Like, the sort of bizarre, like, neurotic scientist sort of characterization. I don't know, this thing about it I find kind of endearing. And I do kind of like the arc that he had in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, actually. But, uh, I'll stay my tongue on that, because we're about to get a look at a mysterious figure who will totally not be turning into a boss fight at some point in the future, just as soon as Axel finishes his comedy routine. Oh, mysterious mysteries of mysteries. Who could it possibly be? Judging by the white hair, I'm gonna say... Xehanort. Like, it, it might seem like Sora's throwing a bit of a temper tantrum at this moment, but, uh... Well, it's all downhill from here. And of course, Donald and Goofy, being the brosifs that they are, still decide to help out as best they can. But of course, well... And I don't really know... Well, I'm kind of surprised that Donald isn't exactly kind of butting heads with Sora, considering the fact that he was all too... You know, he was all too ready to do that in Kingdom Hearts 1. But, uh... I don't know, I guess maybe he's more so worried about finding the king or making sure that uh, the group doesn't dissolve, I guess? Yeah, I don't know, I, I, it's kind of weird. I mean, Donald's, al Donald's always been kind of the abrasive one of the group, so it just seems kind of weird that he's just sort of going along with this rather than trying to clap Sora's head together. Although, then again, I suppose it could, it could also be the fact that he doesn't really know himself. So I guess that might add to it. Anyway, yeah, we have four new worlds to go through, plus... Uh, 
a little something extra after we completed all these. And uh, to be honest, uh, I will say that uh, basically one out of these four worlds is good, the, th the other three I could honestly do without. Can you guess what world that is? Well, this is the good world, the other, f the other three are the not so good ones. Anyway, we now have Beauty and Beast. I now pronounce you as such because... whatever. Gotta say, this was actually a really weird inclusion because... Well, the fact that it's taking place in a very unique location compared to, you know, the Beast Castle in Kingdom Hearts 2. And uh, not to mention the fact that Maleficent is also involved in all this, which is also quite strange, c considering where they were, but then again I suppose that also did add to the crossover elements that Kingdom Hearts brought to the table. And anyway, unlike the first game where Beast literally tore through the dimensions to get back his love, now Bell seems to be acting uh, strange, I guess. It's kind of weird because, like, this is the one plot that I don't think directly copies Kingdom Hearts 1 uh, in terms of what was going on here, so I guess maybe I should, probably should have shown this, but... Eh. I don't think it's really important enough to really warrant showing the rest of the cutscenes, but regardless of such, Beast gets a little bit angsty, Maleficent comes in and tries to influence darkness or some shit. A bunch of different love antics between Bell and Beast fall over each other, and life goes on. I don't think I don't think the GBA sound chip really does this track justice, but I do still like the composition regardless of Holy Bastion. And in, again, in terms of, you know, the Kingdom Hearts series, this is one of my favourite levels. Uh, I actually like cows in the entire series, I like both the castle setting and uh, the town that we get to see in Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, and also Birth by Sleep, that is one of my favourite levels, despite some of the enemies being a bit bullshit in that uh, version of the game, but I'll see no more on that. But again, this is also a great area I've found to, you know, grind for, like, experience points, because, as you'll notice, you'll get more experience uh, with, you know, the more enemies you slay at a higher level, so... Again, if you go back to previous floors, you'll only really be getting, like, you know, single digits experience, whereas here you'll be getting experience in, like, the tens, hundreds, depending on how many enemies you slay. So again, like, I mean, while... While grinding is a lot slower if you want to go back to the lower levels, if you're not quite adept at handling it, I do think that the game itself does provide a decent enough method of, you know, grinding for whatever sort of enemies you need to, while being at the, ex while being at the sort of power level you need to be, because, you know, while some enemies, uh, like the Dark Balls over here, that kind of remind me of the Langoliers from, uh, well, the Langoliers, you know, I kind of forgot where I was going with that, I'm sorry. Uh, the point is, you can quite easily grind a lot of good numbers here, so get to work, dudes and dudettes. Uh, again, I suppose, to uh, has Scully seen this Disney movie of the week? Um, uh, honestly, I can't remember if I have seen Beauty and the Beast before. I, I want to say that I have, but if I did, it was probably years ago, and I don't really remember much of it. Again, so Kingdom Hearts is probably the closest to the adaptation I'm really getting. And uh, plus, I guess having it take place in Holy Bastion will be a little bit uh, more suitable, <laughs> well not suitable, but like a little bit more interesting of a location, because it is visually appealing, it's got a nice sink glass sort of look to it. And uh, well, you also have the plus of Sora, Donald and Goofy running around. I suppose in terms of anything else to talk about really, it's time for the handy dandy tangents, if I can find them. There we go. Uh, well, again, I don't really have any other place to put it, but for the sake of padding out time... Yeah, Malusha, uh, the pink-haired, uh, flower-petaled dude, who has been the source of many effeminate jokes over the years, was initially meant to be female. Again, it's probably kind of obvious considering his very lithe design, and especially if you look up some of the earlier concept arts of the character, but... Yeah, he was initially going to be female, and the part of the reason why they did change that was because because of the fact that he and uh, Larkseen were taking over the organization. Uh, yeah, unintentional sexist implications, so that's part of why it was changed. I don't necessarily know why this was the case, or if if this really was such a problem for Nomura, why he couldn't have just added a couple of female members to the organization, because... Uh, for, I don't know. I mean, you, you could have easily sidestepped that, I suppose, but... Uh, whatever, I guess he just wanted a more masculine figure, so whatever. 
Because, I mean, I, I do have to wonder, like, how many members of the organization were really thought up at this point, or at the very least, ones that you couldn't have at least changed by the time of Kingdom Hearts 2's release in, like, 2005. I don't know. It's a bit of a confusing mess, but regardless as such, onwards to new adventure. Now, uh, this is also a slightly length- well, lengthier, but, like, shorter part than previous parts of the game, in the sense that we also have a couple of new uh, facets, the first of which being different enemy types, as we're already seeing here, but we also have the key to rewards cards, which I will uh, go into when we get there. And, of course, you know, lengthy boss fights abound. And right here you are seeing the miracle that is Cross Slash. Uh, not Cross Slash, fucking idiot, it's Omni Slash. Much more useful here than it is in Rechain of Memories. I don't know why that is, I think it might be because of the fact that... I think it might be the amount of swipes that Cloud does, actually. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the card values, or if it's just the fact that... Uh, you know, in Rechain of Memories they kind of... Uh, nerfed Cloud a little bit, just to make the game feel a little bit more fair in terms of difficulty, but even still, that's, uh... Yeah, that's not on. I wanna abuse Cloud as best I can. And that sounded a little bit wrong, so I'm, we're just gonna forget about that. <sighs> anyway. So I suppose, in order to discuss a couple of other facets, actually, I suppose considering the involvement of Maleficent, because that is also something that I have been uh, kind of wanting to talk about, in terms of the Kingdom Hearts series, because she has been one of the very few recurring elements uh, as, like, sort of sub-antagonists uh, to the organization, Xehanort and, I guess now, uh, Zigbar and the Masters of Masters plot. Uh, well, I guess Maleficent and Pete, really, as the sort of Team Rocket-esque sort of duo, where they'll show up, they'll antagonize Sora for a little bit, but then they'll just sort of go in their merry way and not really do much in terms of story, which has always been kind of fascinating to me. Because, I mean, in Kingdom Hearts 1, she was, at least up until that point, you know, the big bad, the main boss of the uh, game, at least as far as the player was aware before they came to understand what Ansem's true motives were. And, uh, ever since then, she hasn't really found a lot of relevance. I mean, there w she has had some bits of plot development of at least where they try and insert her in, like, you know, with the whole... After her death in Kingdom Hearts 1, they tried to have the whole... She traveled back in time to Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, where she came to understand what the datascape is, which is something that goes into Kingdom Hearts uh, coded. And, uh... Well, it's, uh... I don't really know what they're planning on doing with her. The, out of all the plot elements that I think could be uh, stated to be convoluted the most, I think Maleficent's involvement in exactly what Nomura has planned for her, for her is really up in the air, because... From what I understand, the only thing that she and Pete really want is to rule all worlds, but, you know, we also have a slightly more interesting plot with, you know, the organization or the Masters of Masters doing what they're doing, so... Uh, to me, that's one of the few bits of convolution I'm either... I'm not sure is either gonna tie into something in the future, or is just something that's kind of a waste of time, to be honest. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like the bants between Pete and Maleficent, but, like, in terms of importance to the overall plot, you kind of want to keep things a little bit more concise and focused, especially since Kingdom Hearts 3, both by the fact that it was a game that was meant to end the Xehanort saga, and on top of that, you know, just generally wrap up all the other characters' storylines, you would have thought that the Maleficent thing would have been something that, you know, they would have wanted to keep under wraps, although then again, I guess whether by mandate by Disney, or I guess possibly as something Nomura wants to do with a black box, might be resolved at some stage in the future, but I'm not entirely sure. That's the thing about the series, like, I mean, and again, and a point of criticism that I can understand people for having is that it is a game series that constantly gives you the feeling that you're, you know, chasing the birds, so to speak, that you're constantly chasing after plot threads in the hopes of something better, in the, in the attempts to kind of give your brain a bit of stress relief. I don't know, it's as, it's equal parts a hook to the series as it is, well, an addiction. And, uh, well, I need my fix, damn it. So, uh, come on, cough it up. Yes, bend it over. And, uh, gonna sort out our deck here for a little bit, but then we will immediately cut right back to the action. There we go. Ah, uh, seamless editing-ish, as far as you know. 
And now we continue off to the boss fight against the male pheasant, the male pheasant, whatever's your poison. So again, after Belle apparently died from Maleficent's attack, she's going, I'm an evil brouhaha who's gonna brouhaha ha 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 up, unleash the darkness beast. But then Beast says fuck you and we basically enter into a boss fight. It's a... Uh, I'm actually, I might be wrong on this, although it could be out of syndication by the time I upload this, but uh... I'm pretty sure they released like a sequel to the Maleficent movie, which is weird where they kind of like put her in the position of a like a, a good guy or a hero or something, or like a misunderstood villain. It's kind of kind of weird to me, because there seems to be a lot of movies that are doing that in recent days. Like, I mean, I remember like a couple of years ago there was um it, it was a fucking Texas Chainsaw of movie. It wasn't the Michael Bay remakes, it was the I think it was just called Texas Chainsaw, which which did this like whole bullshit little thing where like they tried to put Leatherface as like the, the misunderstood hero. And, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's frustrating, and uh, let's just say when I heard the line "Do your thing, cuz" uttered in a movie, I was uh, I was livid. Cause I mean, and and especially for a character like fucking Leatherface of all people, like he's not the sort of character that you know picks up a chainsaw and goes, "With this chainsaw, I shall be, I shall make my play to great justice to slay evil." It's fucking ridiculous. But luckily, Maleficent, she'll turn into a giant dragon, which I'm kind of surprised I got into the GBA, to be honest. I mean, they didn't exactly give this sort of liberty to... Fuck, I can't quite remember the boss. Which is probably intentional, because Castle Oblivion is working its magic even on me. But uh, yeah, Cross Slash is excellent right here, and, well, uh, stop magic as well if you have it. And, uh, well, while that is a bit of a challenging boss fight, and one that is very meaty in terms of a helper, just keep on your guard, use your zero cards efficiently, and you should be okay. Because, I mean, the big thing about the Maleficent boss fight in Kingdom Hearts 1 is that for as difficult as it was, it was mainly because of the fact that she had fire that could spread throughout such a large area, whereas on the Game Boy Advance, I think you have a little bit more wiggle room to work with. And uh, the gimmick cards, we'll soon be seeing, gives you the ability to summon a platform, which can basically give you a bit of a lift and, you know, make your day hitting Maleficent easier. And uh, look, she even gives you platforms to hit you with. Now, uh, I believe in Rechain of Memories, you do have uh, two different boss fights, because you have a boss fight with a regular Maleficent, and here you have also the boss fight with the dragon. But uh, I guess couldn't fit both into the GBA, so they just set up for this, really. Either way, though, a decent boss fight, and one that's made a little bit more comfortable by the presence of Zero cards. And of course, Omni Slash, which is forever my favorite ability. Uh, Homer Simpson, save us with your gravity magic. Oh, that was weird. What the hell was he saying there? It kind of, it kind of sounded like the, uh, uh, like the few Sega games in the Mega Drive that have the whole SEGA, uh, like, scream thing by Tom Kalinske. I don't know. Dan Castellaneta, he was weird. This is a very lengthy boss fight, though, so, uh, you know, get a packet of chips and dip, crack open a... Pepsi, beer, have a beast run by. One thing I will say though is that in terms of Maleficent boss fights, uh, she usually has kind of gotten the better deal of bosses in the series, I found. Because, like, I mean, not just with Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, I think she was in Kingdom Hearts 2, I don't quite remember. I, I'm, I'm gonna say no, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Chain of Memories and Birth by Sleep have all been pretty fun, so, you know. While her presence in the story might be a bit pointless, Gameplay-wise, she's as solid as she's as solid as ever. Huh. Uh, Cloud, save me! Save me from the darkness that envelops my soul. And I have no extra commentary tangents. This will be fun. And thus, Maleficent is defeated forever. I guess until she makes a return from the dead escape. Actually, that's, a, that's also another thing. It's weird how she kind of returned in Kingdom Hearts 2 because people remembered who she was. Which is uh, weird because that... I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm missing something in the... Like the manuals... In like the manuals or the, like the reading material. I don't know. But by the power of love, Belle comes back to life. Yippee. 
I don't really know whether to find this, uh, sweet or not, because... Like, I mean, Beast literally tore through the dimensions to be with the one he loves, so, like, I mean, I don't know whether that's, like, the greatest example of true love I've ever seen, or the greatest example of someone being a stalker. Either way, they were destined to be together, so... You good on the dude for breaking the laws of time and space? And, yet again, we have vague connections to memories, so let's create some happy ones. And my heart is starting to break. Uh, they'll have new memories, but not me. Cursed to be forever alone, in the dark, in the dying. Yes, we better leave them alone, which is a feeling I know all too well. <laughs> So anyway, we'll leave them to have their little, uh, reunion. And in the meantime, we'll find out what the key to rewards card does. Let's fulfill the requirements. We can talk about our day. Press the circle button to enter the vault code. You know, get another page of the Thievius Raccoonus. Just pad out the running time before I can eventually do my signature sign-off line. And yeah, basically what we get from the Kingdom Rewards room is basically some special magic cards or abilities or uh, some, I believe in Rechain of Memories, also some specific cards from other games in the series like 358 over 2 days and Kingdom Hearts 2. But anyway, I'm Solidus Scully, keep it new metal, and I will see you dudes and dudettes next time. Bye bye